that they're an intimate piece of jewelry, and they are everywhere, making them the perfect object to look at minimalism in a different and more forward-looking way. I think in many ways nowadays, where we have more and more people, uh, like always in the phone, always in the run, and always on, so to say, always online. And I think what the wristwatch, especially the analog wristwatch, can 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 provide is also sort of a balance uh, in a people's everyday life. That's Magnus Ericsson, and he runs Larsen and Ericsson. We see the watches as a design object. We don't see it as a, as a piece of jewelry. We don't see it as as as, an, as a fashion accessory. We actually see it like a little piece of design. And for us, it's more a matter of being able to try and you know translate some of the the, the Danish design traits and some of the Danish design values uh, onto such a little object as as the watch. Uh, it's basically that I reckon one of the smallest canvases you can work on when when you are an, an artist or a designer. Now, the story of Larsen and Ericsson shows how Danish design principles are still very much alive and how they're changing with the times. Got it? With the times? I know. Don't worry, there'll be more jokes you can catch up. Anyways, Magnus started the company with his best friend, Yeppa. Magnus and Yeppa, they met way back in the third grade, and the two of them became fast friends. But what bonded them wasn't video games or toys. They actually bonded over the works. <laughs> See, ordinary people like Magnus and Yeppa couldn't afford the watches that their idols wore. And as they learned more about Danish design, their tastes started to diverge from the flashy and extravagant, and they became interested in more affordable and accessible watches. Now they traveled the world studying different designs and they became so obsessed that they finally decided to make one on their own. These many years of looking into accessible watches somehow uh, led to where we are today without us actually knowing that we were doing research uh, on behalf of what were to become uh, NASA Tricks. Now the first thing they had to do was they had to decide what kind of watches they were going to make. Now here's something you may not know. There are basically three kinds of watches out there. Quartz movement, mechanical movement, and automatic movement. Uh, today, uh, July 20th, 2022, the ship approaching uh, Ahubari in Iceland. And this is the second time we stopped here in uh, this cruise, this uh, trip. And now it's 6 a.m. in the morning. So those houses built three hundred years ago. Do you see something uh, special here in front of us? Something that you have not seen before. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it has disappeared now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, red, the red traffic lights <laughs> in Akureyri, they are different from other towns. The red traffic lights are a heart. 
Oh, all right. Oh. That means something, or we have a It it means that uh, uh, you're welcome. Oh, <laughs> that, uh, that the people uh, uh, of Akureyri uh, are. Uh, Friendly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, And uh, now it's uh, quite fast. Uh, I don't know uh, exactly how fast it is, but uh, 19th uh, century. Uh, these small wooden houses. And uh, now we are crossing the Eyjafjörður Bay uh, and uh, here on our right hand side we have the domestic airport. Now you can fly from here to Reykjavik. You will be in Reykjavik, the capital, in two days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you will too? Of course. You, <laughs> you are going to Isakjord, I think. Or some of you okay. uh, are going to Isakjord. Yes. Yeah. And other will go to Grundafjord. Yeah. And then you will go to Reykjavik. Uh, no. Yeah. And this is only uh, a small. So, the main uh, occupation of uh, the farmers in Iceland uh, is to cut the grass. <laughs> there are some uh, sheep, some uh, cows here oh. on the left hand side. Oh, sheep cow. <laughs> 